All right, thanks for watching. And today I have something very, very special planned. So I found this wonderful document written by Keith Conrad that calculates the Gaussian integral in 12 ways. Whoa! <laughs> and I figured in the next couple of videos, maybe once a week, I will show you one of the ways of calculating the Gaussian integral. And of course, to start, we'll do the most classical one using polar coordinates. And I know I've done this many, many times, but I thought just for sake of completeness, let's do that. So, and by the way, the reason I'm doing this video is just to show off the proof that Black Pen Red Pen gave me. Ta-da! Let's see, if you, if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, just look at this pretty shirt and then it gives you the proof. But, <laughs> let's do it. So, let I be the Gaussian integral the integral of minus infinity to infinity of e of negative x squared dx. And the thing that makes it work is just based on this weird little trick that it doesn't matter which variable you use. You could use x, you could use y, you can use love, you can use banana, whatever. So it's also equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of negative y squared dy. Why is this important? Because it turns out you can multiply both of them and you get a nice simplification. So i squared equals to i times i. And now let's use both of those variables. That's equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e of negative x squared dx and the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e of negative y squared dy. And here comes a beautiful thing. You have the product of two integrals. Let's turn it into a double integral. So let's put this constant inside the second integral and we get integral from negative infinity to infinity, integral from negative infinity to infinity, e to the negative x squared dx times e of negative y squared dy. And then there's this beautiful theorem called Fubini's theorem that says, well, this double, so the integral of an integral is just a double integral. So I know it looks silly, but it's a very deep theorem, I promise you. And so this equals to the integral of e to the negative x squared, e to the negative y squared, uh, dx dy. Which, if you like, we can just rewrite as the integral from negative infinity to infinity, integral from negative infinity to infinity, e of negative x squared plus y squared, dx dy. And it's very strange because we turn this simple integral e of negative x squared into a more complicated integral, e of negative x squared plus y squared. That said, because we have x squared plus y squared, it allows us to use polar coordinates, which is pretty nice. So, let's do that. And you may say, well, what are the bounds for the polar coordinates? Well, here we have the xy plane. Boom, boom, boom. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity, blah, 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 is just a whole plane. How can we write this in terms of polar coordinates? Well, notice if you pick a random point, okay, then the radius, well, it's between zero and infinity, so the radius is positive, and the angle, theta, well, it's between zero and two pi. So, our new bounds of integration will be integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to infinity, x squared plus y squared becomes r squared, so e of negative r squared dr d theta. Now, 
at this point it looks like a lost cause because we had the integral e of negative x squared, we turned it into e of negative r squared, which seems impossible, so it seems we haven't done any simplification, but lo and behold, there's something that we forgot and that's super important. If you use polar coordinates, you have an extra factor of r, har, de har har, okay? And this is the thing that saves us here because, wow, we cannot find an antiderivative of e of negative r squared. We can find an antiderivative of r e of negative r squared. Because this becomes integral from 0 to infinity of, let's see, e of negative r squared. If you differentiate this, you get negative 2r e to the minus r squared. So in order to kill off that negative 2, you divide by it. So it becomes minus 1 half e of negative r squared from 0 to infinity d theta. And then that just becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi. So as r goes to infinity, we get e of negative infinity, which is 0. And then minus minus, which becomes plus. So 1 half, e to the 0, which is 1. So in the end, we get 1 half d theta, which becomes, if you want, 1 half theta from 0 to 2 pi, which just becomes 1 half times 2 pi, and we get pi. Delicious, delicious pi. Now, what have we found so far? We found that i squared equals to pi, but remember what was i? i was this integral. Well, this function is positive. So the integral is positive, and therefore, you may ask, is it square root of pi or square root of, of negative square root of pi? Well, it is square root of pi, because remember, i is positive. In other words, this integral here, though, is impossible to calculate, just becomes square root of pi. Whoa! All right, so if you like that and want to see more math and also a sequel to this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.